I mean, she, we can take no for an answer. She's, we've given her an opportunity to present her side of the story, <coughs> and she's declined. So we'll simply put that on air rather than, you know, running down the street after someone to, you know, that might make for great television, but it just, it doesn't feel right. That's not the way that we like to do business. So on the ethical stuff, um, yeah, listen, listen to your, your own moral compass inside. That should guide you. I would just add that that's called an ambush interview generally, right? Uh, and that I, I, I agree that you need to weigh this carefully, whether you do that or not. In some cases, I think it's warranted. In some cases, it's not warranted. But that's exactly the point, is you talk it over among yourselves, your colleagues, your news directors, et cetera. And in most cases, you'll do the right thing. Brett, one more cup. I told you you should have been on the panel. You can bet that anyone you report on will find the weakness in your story, and you won't feel good about it. Other questions? I'll, have, I'll ask one last one. Who makes for a good, other than indefatigability, energy, who makes a good investigative reporter, and for whom is it a bad idea to be a, uh, among the reporting community, an investigative reporter? <laughs> in any order. Well, I, I was going to say, and, and looking at the stories um, that we just saw from the two people next to me, I mean, if you, it, it takes someone who likes to tell stories. I mean, it's, I mean, it comes down to telling a story, and more importantly, and what I love about the, these two stories that I, I, I just saw up here, um, not forgetting, I mean, this was a story about zoning. This was a story about a State Department. Um, that's what the topic is, but behind that all, it's, it comes down to people. So uh, making sure to include real people in your stories. Um, and, and to me, the best, in, the best investigative reporters out there are those who just, uh, they're good storytellers, and making sure to convey the stories of the people that, that were out there covering every day. I think that's great, and I, I, but I, also, I think there's an adrenaline rush that a good investigative reporter feels when they're onto a bully or when they're onto an idiot who's getting $200,000 a year as a city council salary and doesn't know his job. I mean, I think that an investigative reporter hears this stuff and goes, and, and these people are being screwed and they don't have a voice and they aren't, don't know that much about it and it's wrong. And to see that fixed is, I mean, I don't think there's a higher calling, really, than to, to shine a light on the way your taxpayer dollars are being spent. I, I just think that it's a very high calling. And when it's told right, boy, it's a great rush. I, I just have to say one thing. There was a city council member you saw, uh, Bernie Parks, who used to be our police chief, who's now a city council member. And, and I could have hung him uh, because he said something to us, and we chose not to use a sound bite, but I'm still kind of sorry I didn't use it. I said, what, do you think these people will ever get their money back? And he goes, eh, no, probably not. I mean, this is like a softball question to a politician. You say, well, I'm going to do whatever I can to get our money back. By God. He didn't even, he's not even savvy enough to know to say that. And I felt like putting it in, we thought, oh, it's a cheap shot. But I wish I had, because after the money was returned to these people, he took credit for it. <laughs> and so I was really sorry. But I've got the sound bite somewhere if I ever decide to reprise. But you go after bullies. You know. So passion is important. Yeah. I would have to go with... Um, when you don't like it when you see other people getting taken advantage of. Like for me, one of my favorite parts of this whole investigation that we did was an elderly couple that we met. And we found them actually at the very, very last minute. Um, the story was all written and we found it and we went back and redid the whole story because we needed to include them. But we, for me, that was the, one of the most rewarding things about the story. I shouldn't even say rewarding because I don't even know if we helped them, but just that we shined light on the situation they were going through and that hopefully when people see the story because of those 
that one couple, now maybe the governor saw that or aides saw that and think we really need to make a change. And it was all because, you know, I'll be okay if I don't get $300 back from a business, but I mean, they need it. And you have to just remember there are other people out there who do, who, you know, you really can ha have a big impact on through your reporting. They were a great touch, and I really want to compliment you on using that little bit of Nat's sound about the cucumbers with either cream or vinegar. I'm like, really? That's the choice? I mean, it was just a great little moment. <laughs> well, this has been very interesting, and uh, we applaud you for your uh, determination to do these stories and to bring them to the attention of the public. Uh, and uh, we applaud you for winning these awards tonight. So congratulations. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder to students, uh, tomorrow morning panels will continue and there'll be representatives here uh, from Frontline, NPR, and ABC News, uh, all of whom did some extraordinary work and I think you'll enjoy seeing it and talking to them. So we'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you. Oh, that was very nice. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, Thank you. Just, yeah.